Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with jazz pianist and film composer Alton Sinclair. We talked to him about his new 2021 CD, Reconnected, that stitches together a multifaceted tapestry of different worlds combined. This project is strong and personal as he merges two distinct cultures that define his identity. From Austin, Texas, his cultural heritage of Mexican and Turkish roots have influenced his style. Over time, he's worked with music icons like Dee Dee Bridgewater, Terry Lynn Carrington, Christian McBride, Joe Jonas, and many others. His story is one you should hear. Enjoy. Well, hey, thanks for taking a minute out today, man. I appreciate it. Of course. Thanks so much for, 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 for responding. I'm super excited to be able to, to talk to Cass about the new album. Absolutely. Well, it's good that we get to connect here on your album, Reconnected. And I want to know up front here with the new album, you know, it's a strange time on earth. It's been quite a whirlwind for artists and in particular, I think jazz musicians to kind of navigate through this lockdown and no live music. So with that as our subtext, you have a new album coming out during a time that a month ago things seemed like it was getting better, but now we're back in that ambiguous zone. What's it feel like to be able to communicate with the new album and to have all of this going right now? Wow, great, great, great question. Well, with this new album, like, let me back up a little bit. The new album came during whenever I was getting pretty anxious about the entire pandemic because I, I recorded this in December of 2020. Whenever this was happening, I was like, well, you know, we might have a CD release show. We might. I mean, you know, we'll, we'll see. I, I, I got to be honest with you. I was pretty, um, not deterred, but I was, I was unencouraged to say the least. But, but whenever we hit in the studio, it was, uh, it was great because we got to like play live, we got to play music with one another again in a studio. And this wasn't like a remote album either. This was like in a studio. So that's why I was like really excited. And you know, like now, that it's out, I'm still really, really happy about how everything uh, has gone. Right now, the way that I've been, uh, the way that I've been feeling with everything been out, it's like people are definitely more aware online now, and so you know, having like an online presence has definitely helped, uh, like my my headspace whenever it comes to like releasing this album and and having the album being able to be to reach you know a lot more audience members than it could have before so i try to look at it optimistically even though like we're kind of in like a transitional phase within the pandemic or who knows it could transition any any way but i'm still really happy to have like people checking it out and it's it's definitely giving me some encouragement about uh jazz music as a whole and it well really music as a whole and so you know the, the online thing nowadays is, is definitely a bit encouraging. You know, the one thing about albums is that just it, 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 it's kind of a light through this artistic darkness of finding your voice and what your voice is and what your background is and, 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 you know, personal connections that you have on this album. What was it about this album? What is it about this album that is so personal and so intertwined into those ideas that you hope the audience gets so this is definitely a a an album that was personal for me all the music with the exception once again of two of them are are my originals and those originals are spawning out of my heritage i'm half mexican american and half turkish being trying to combine these two was definitely very um it was a challenge but then it wasn't because like I'm familiar with both sides of my, like, familial uh, heritage. Just basically trying to do research about, like, well, you know, how does, like, Turkish music and uh, Mexican music uh, spawn. And so before my grandfather passed, he was telling, you know, he used to tell me, like, well, you know, our roots, yes, they're from Mexico, but they come by way of Spain. And so instead of going direct into Mexico, I went into Spain about, as far as, like, research. And I found that, like, Spaniard and Spanish music and Turkish music are pretty close. And so they kind of gave me a, a bit of pride because, you know, all my life I was like, not struggling, but like trying to find a, um, trying to find like a balance. Like, well, you know, like, like, like how do I embrace the two in unity or, or, you know, how can I like find a way to, to like coexist in like both worlds? Cause they're, they're very different worlds. And so this music was definitely a way for me to find that identity and like be comfortable with like the fact that I'm both Turkish and Mexican, which is a very odd, I, I, an unorthodox combination would be a better word. And so, you know, this music for me definitely hit that. But a little deeper, 
all the tracks have a meaning, but the but the big ones that I wanted to talk about is is reconnected the title track. That's actually the beginning of it is a um, almost like a transcription of what my Turkish grandfather plays on his uh, sit harp. So my grand my my grandfather who's still alive in Turkey is a box zither player, which is basically a, a sit down harp. It's it's a stringed instrument that you pluck. And there's a video that my dad sent me of him like. He's basically improvising at home. I, I listened to it, and I was like, oh, man, this is, like, super deep. I, I took, I took like, you know, the first 30 seconds to a minute of it, and I was like, oh, man, this could, like, have, like, a vibe, like, like, a, like a Tony Williams vibe or, like, a, like a train vibe, kind of, like, modal. And so I was like, oh, that's a – so now I'm, like, combining, like, like, my love of jazz and, like, my heritage and then, you know, something directly, like, from my, from my um, grandfather, who's still alive. And then – the other thing, the other side of it was like, oh man, I, I wonder like how I can like create contrast within the piece. And so I added a Latin American uh, aspect by by adding salsa, by like adding a salsa rhythm into into it. I should say a salsa um, uh, uh, feel in in the second part of it. And so for me, that's how I was able to combine all three and put that into reconnected, which is you know with, which is. A, a pun in itself, you know, I was able to reconnect with a bunch of things that I'm familiar with already. And so that's like number one. But then Desnoodle, the third track, it's kind of a minimalist thing because, you know, once again, we're we're doing a chordless trio. So like, there's no uh, piano or guitar and it's a trombone-led band. So that's like kind of unorthodox as well. And and the thing with that is during the whole piece, I keep like one bass line and I just change around the melody a little bit. But it's it's basically like the same thing just with a few few different um, takes on like the same rhythms and then and then we go into the blues and and so what that means is like we're using not bare minimum but we're using bare bones or fundamental pieces of music whether it be like a consistent bass line or the blues and then we're putting that into this uh, an orthodox setting and then the way that that relates to the name just noodle so just noodle in Spanish translates like directly to naked but the way I thought about it was like minimalist, naked, you know, bare, uh, bare necessities. And so that's why I call it this noodle. And then how that relates to my grandfather who passed away was uh, at his funeral service, there's a song called uh, Un Puño de Tierra, which translates to a fistful of dirt. That basically is saying like, you know, whenever we, we, leave, this, uh, whenever we leave this life, we leave with a fistful of dirt. And, and you know, there, there's a lot of beauty in that, such as like, you know, like how simple that is. And so simple, naked, minimalist, I, I try to combine that all into like that third track. Beautiful. So you're from Austin. Talk to me a little bit about kind of how the trombone and how jazz became your life. Is that always a goal of yours to be a musician? My aunt and uncle have been band directors in Texas for 27 years. And, you know, I, so my, my parents are divorced and I have great relationships with both of them. It's just, uh, you know, they're divorced. I grew up with my mom's side of the family, and, and that's the Mexican side. And, and I'm, I'm not sure if you're familiar with, like, the way Latino families work, but we're, all, we're always all up in, in each other's business. There's, like, no such thing as, like, privacy. <laughs> I was always around uh, my family, whether it be, like, my aunt, my cousins. You know, like, my cousins, like, we all went to the same school, so it's, like, there's, like, no escape. <laughs> you know, it, jokingly so. But so my aunt, I would always, like, go over to her house and, you know, just – be there, you know, babysitting or like, like I'd be getting babysat or whatever. You know, she was a band director. So, you know, one day she took me to the band hall and, and I like pull out a euphonium and I, there's like a picture of me like puffing my cheeks trying to play a note. And then after that, my aunt has like this atomic bassy record, like, like a, like an LP, not like a CD. And so she was playing it and like, she told me that I was bobbing my head like a jazz musician would. And I, I don't know, I was like three or four at that point. And so it was definitely introduced to me very early, but I really didn't take jazz trombone very seriously until I was in high school, and my high school did like a, essentially Ellington kind of thing. Through there, I got like a little mini lesson with Elliot Mason uh, over like this standard uh, Soft Leaves in a Morning Sunrise, and I just like fell in love with like jazz and like the culture, so I was like, I got to do this. And that's basically where it started was was at essentially Ellington in 2011. What was the first live show you saw that made you think, man, that's something I'd love to do? Ooh, Jazz and Lincoln Center. Oh, no, no. I remember now. It was Frank West's last concert 
at Dizzy's Coca-Cola Club in 2011 with the Juilliard Jazz Orchestra. That same conference, yeah. What What do you like the best about being a professional musician? What do you look forward to every day the most? I like knowing that I've never worked a day in my life. Um, I'm only 27, so, you know, grain of salt, of course, but... You know, I, I've been a I've been a professor now for three years. I've been teaching private students for a while, and, and I've been playing, and I've had some really wonderful opportunities to tour, like in Japan and Europe, and, you know, record on people's CDs. And honestly, I've just, like, never felt like, wow, do I need a career change? Like, that's I don't think that's ever crossed my mind once. And I don't think everybody else can say that about their line of work. Well, you've been fortunate, as you mentioned, getting around and seeing the world. You've been, you know, performed with Dee Dee Bridgewater, Terry Lynn Carrington, Christian McBride, Rodney Whitaker, you know, The Temptations, it goes on and on. What did you get from the legends and the luminaries and the big shots in the world mm. of jazz and music that in turn you've used to teach those that are in your classes that, as an educator? I've gotten a little something from everybody, whether it be before the gig or on the gig or during or after the gig. I think the biggest thing that I've admired about playing with legends is like understanding that I'm not there to just like share the bandstand. I'm there to like learn about music. And that's like a thing with like jazz music. And I, I'd, I'd expand that to all music, but you know, like since we're talking about jazz, like there's just like this endless, not whole, but, like, endless amount of knowledge to, like, know. And, and you know, I, I don't want to sound cliche. It's just, like, you know, the, the more you know, the realize less you know. And that's kind of, like, where I'm coming from, which is, like, for me, and I, I use the word every opportunity I have to play with a big name or even a small name or, or like, my friends or, or, like, in my own group, there's always something to be learned, and I just, I absolutely love that. You know, playing with... Rodney Whitaker, uh, he was my mentor in grad school as well, but, like, having him on my second record and, and all that, like, you learn how much music there is to learn and how much music there is to love. And, like, playing with people like Dee Dee Bridgewater and Carrie Lynn Carrington, you learn about, like, how serious people take this music. Not saying that the others don't, but, you know, like, just in that example. And playing with, like, the Temptations and the Four Tops, you learn about, like, you, you learn about, like, music history and, like, you kind of have all the elements of of that within Motown. So everyone has has an idea, a uh, perception of who they think you are, your family, your friends, fans, students. Yes. But ultimately, you live your life. You have a perception of you. Who do you think you are? That's a great question. Um, huh. That's a really great question. Well, first, I'm a husband. That's number one. You know, I, have a, I have a really great wife. Um, she has the patience of the saints, which is why she teaches second graders. I'm a husband, number one. I'm an avid animal lover. I have two beautiful dogs. I, I can't go a conversation without mentioning my dogs. I, I love my dogs so much. And, I've, and I'm, of course, a huge, huge student and participant of the music, if you will. I'm somebody who, who's able to, to look at things in an optimistic view most of the time. And I, I kind of grew up not, not having as many resources as, as others would. I grew up with a single mother. And so, you know, nowadays, I, I just look at everything as an opportunity to, like, improve. And so I think, I, I think I'm always, like, looking towards, like, okay, well, how can this get better every time? So that's, like, kind of who I am in, in a nutshell. Uh, husband, avid dog lover, and, and lover of music, as well as, like, students of music in life. Beautiful. Very nice, man. Alton, thank you for taking some time out it's great to run into your music and to profile it on the show good luck with the album and the proverbial return to the stage thank you so much yeah we're, we're, we're going to be at three universities next week uh university of mary hart and baylor texas state university sam houston state university and in october we'll be at michigan state and hopefully ball state beautiful man thanks so much joe really appreciate you thanks for listening and tuning in to another neon jazz interview where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players in austin kansas city and spots all over the world giving fans all that jazz and thanks to alton for his time music and cool if you want to hear more interviews go to famous interviews with joe domino in the itunes store visit neon jazz at youtube.com and for everything neon jazz all the time go to the neon jazz.blogspot.com until next time enjoy the jazz my friends <laughs> Thank you.
Neon Jazz.